Hello class, in this video we're going to be learning about atomic emission. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate and explain what happens at the atomic level when we burn fireworks to produce the beautiful colours that we see in the sky. I'd also like to point out that the content that I'll be going through in this particular video is going to be extremely relevant to your first cat. We know that fireworks can produce some very spectacular colours. The colours we often see are the colours yellow, orange, red, green and blue. And the reason why they actually produce these beautiful colours occurs in a process referred to as atomic emission. And this occurs when we heat certain elements so that it gives off different wavelengths of light, just meaning different colours of light. So this means that if you want to make a firework that gives off a yellow colour, you want to include an element that gives off a yellow light. In this case over here, you might want to add in sodium. Alternatively, if you're trying to create a firework that gives off a nice greeny bluey colour, then you might want to add in copper instead. So let's now look into a bit more detail as to what happens during atomic emission. To understand what happens in this process, we must firstly begin to explain what happens inside of the chemicals before we actually heat and light them up. So the atoms inside of a firework, we say that they are stable because the electrons are confined to their respective electron shell. What that essentially means is that if you look at this diagram here, the two electrons that's found in the first shell, they will stay in the first shell and they won't move at all. And this applies to the electrons found in the second shell and third shell, they will stay there. When electrons are confined to their respective electron shell, we say that the atom is going to be in the ground state and the ground state is essentially the lowest energy state of an atom. And I'm trying to show you that it is stable by this illustration over here. So just to clarify, electrons are most stable when they are found in their respective shell. However, if you have an external source, like a flame source, such as a Bunsen burner, or if you expose the atom to radiation of high frequencies, such as UV, X-ray or gamma rays, what happens is that the electrons found inside of an atom, they actually change position. When an atom is in contact with an external energy source, so such as a Bunsen burner or radiation of high energy, these electrons of the atom will absorb the energy from the external energy source and they themselves get excited. When atoms are in this excited state, the electrons actually move positions within the atom. So let's have a think about where do the electrons will actually move to after they've been excited. Do you think they will move away from the nucleus or do you think they'll move closer to the nucleus? If you've answered this correctly, you would have answered that the electrons will move further away from the nucleus. The reason why they move away from the nucleus is because if you recall the structure of an atom, we previously discussed that electron shells found closer to the nucleus have low energy, whereas electron shells found further away from the nucleus have higher energy. So once an electron has actually gained and absorbed the energy from the fire source or from the high energy radiation, what will happen is that this particular electron is now excited and it will actually jump out into an electron shell with high energy. We now consider the atom to be in the excited state because the electrons are now at a higher energy level. Let me show you an example to illustrate what I mean by this. In my example down below, I've got the Bohr diagram of lithium. We know that lithium has an atomic number of three, so therefore it should have three electrons, and this is how it should be arranged if you've drawn this successfully. Now, in this particular arrangement over here, we consider lithium to be in the ground state, so that's the lowest energy state of lithium. However, if lithium was in contact with a fire source, like so, what will happen is that the electrons in lithium will actually absorb the energy um, from the fire, and in doing so, it will actually move to a higher energy level as shown over here. When an electron has jumped energy levels or skipped energy levels, we now consider the atom to be in the excited state. Please note that atoms only stay in an excited state for a very short moment because they become extremely unstable with the excess energy gained from the fire source. So in order for it to become stable, what happens is that this particular electron over here actually reverts back into its original shell. So in doing so, it gets back to the ground state. So as you can see here, the electrons going from the third electron shell back to the second electron shell where it originally belonged. However, this process is also coupled with the emission of radiation. So as you can see here, I've said 
the excess energy absorbed by the electron is emitted in the form of radiation. Generally speaking, it's released in the form of visible light, which we can see as it returns back down to the ground state. And this is actually shown by this part over here where that represents the radiation emitted. It is through this process of where electrons absorb energy and then electrons releasing energy, which causes the different flame colors or lights to be observed in fireworks. So the explosion of the fireworks excites the electrons and as the electrons return back down to the ground state, they emit radiation in, within the visible light spectrum. By burning different chemicals in fireworks, this creates different fire colors. I would like to point out that Burning any chemicals will not always result in different lights being emitted. The reason why this is the case is due to the limitations of the human vision. Our eyes can only see radiation that's within the visible light spectrum. So that means any radiation that has wavelengths that's found outside of a certain range cannot be seen by the human eye. If you look on the example down below, this over here is a chart that shows you all the different types of radiation that exist and it sequences it from low energy to high energy. Radiation that falls within this range over here, so within 700 nanometers to 400 nanometers, our eyes can pick that up and we can actually see colors as a result of that. However, any radiation that's found outside of this range, we can't see. And we know that already because obviously we can't see x-rays, we can't see microwaves, and we also can't see radio waves. So you're probably thinking, why am I telling you this? For most elements, when they absorb energy and release energy, they emit light that has a wavelength within the visible light spectrum as shown over here. However, there is a small percentage of elements that when they absorb energy and relate radiation, this radiation is often has a wavelength that's found either higher or lower than this. And as a result, this doesn't actually cause a change in the flame color. Let's briefly review about the process that occur during atomic emission. So over here, I've got electrons in the ground state. So when you've got an atom that has been in contact with a fire source, what happens is that these electrons absorb energy and by absorbing energy, they move to a higher energy level as shown over here. So afterwards, we now classify the atom to be in the excited state. As previously discussed, atoms stay in the excited state very briefly due to the excess energy absorbed by the electrons. As a result, the electrons return back to the ground state and release the absorbed energy, generally in the form of visible light, which causes color light to be emitted and seen. What I want you guys to do now is I want you to have a go with answering several questions related to atomic emission. So the first question says, which subatomic particle moves between the ground state and excited state? If you've answered this question correctly, you should have got C as the answer, which is going to be the electron. For this question, please choose the correct word that fills and matches this description down below. For this particular question, it's talking about moving to the excited state and that only occurs when electrons move away from the nucleus. In this question over here, we want to identify what happens when an electron moves from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. The correct answer for this question over here is that energy is going to be absorbed and in doing so, it makes you in the excited state. In this particular question, when an electron moves from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, what happens is that energy is going to be released and it returns back to the ground state. For this question over here, you need to identify what state the atom is going to be in. So light is emitted when an electron moves from the excited state back to the ground state. The process of an atom releasing energy when it moves to a lower energy state is called atomic emission. And for the very last question, it reads, when an electron jumps from one energy level to another energy level, what determines the size of the jump? In this particular video, I've only shown you examples where electrons were jumping between one electron shell. However, you can actually jump between one, two, three or more electron shells, and that's going to be dependent on how much energy is applied. So this means that if you've got a very intense, strong flame, or you've expose the atom uh, with high energy radiation, this will cause the jump to be a lot more greater. The last thing that we'll be looking at in this video is understanding why is it that different chemicals present in a firework produces different flame colors.
The reason why different elements produce different flame colors is mainly due to the differences in the electron configurations. Remember, the electron configurations tell you the arrangements of electrons in a given element. So by having different electron configurations, this essentially means that the number of excited electrons for each element will differ since each element have different amounts of electrons. And as a result of that, the movement of electrons between electron shells will also vary between each element. So what this means is that the electrons found in one particular element may jump in a slightly different manner where you go from shell one to shell two, whereas in another element, it might be different where it jumps from shell one to shell three instead. And as a result of this, the radiation that's released for each element will be different because they've got differences in their wavelength ultimately producing a different flame color observed. I'm going to show you and illustrate what I mean by this in the example on the right hand side. So I've got the Bohr diagram of both lithium and nitrogen. If you expose both of these to an external flame source, their electrons become excited and they move to a high energy level. However, the electrons are unstable, so they release energy by returning back into the ground state. However, because both of these elements differ in terms of the number of electrons or the electron configurations, the energy that's released in each of these will have slightly different wavelengths. And as a result of that, this contributes to differences in the flame color observed. So hopefully you've got a better understanding of how atomic emission works. What I'd like you to do for the remainder of this period is I'd like you to please answer the review questions found on Google Slides. So see if you can answer these questions over here because this is going to be relevant to your cat as well. This is the end of the video. Hopefully this video has helped you and I'll see you guys again in the next video. Bye.